Income tax, 2023-2024. Other adjustments to income. Get ready and some coffee so we can avoid the government forcing us to move into a shack with income tax. Preparation, 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the instructions for Schedule 1 section of the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line two, adjustment to income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Deductions for taxes being good, therefore we're always looking to see if we can get more of them. Noting the major differences between the above-the-line deductions or adjustments to income and the below-the-line deductions, which are the greater of standard deduction or itemized deductions. One of those being that if you qualify for an adjustment to income, you don't typically have to clear the hurdle of the standard deduction to get the benefit from it. Looking at the first page of the Form 1040, we're on line number 10, Adjustments to Income from Schedule 1, line 26. Here's the Schedule 1, part number 2, Adjustment to Income. We're looking at uh, 24 here, other adjustments, which are going to be the items that possibly are not as prominent, therefore under the category of other adjustments, but still listing out many of those items and then if they don't fall into this category we have the good old z down below for the other adjustments where you can list the type and amount so let's go over a few of those now that might fit into the other category line 24a jury duty pay enter your jury duty pay if you gave pay to your employer because your employer paid your salary while you served on the jury so in other words, if you have to go to jury duty, then you, you have a situation where you might have to remove yourself from work to go to jury duty. And the employer might say, still pay you for that time since it's mandatory jury duty. And in that case, they might say, hey, look, any money that you got from jury duty, I want you to give it to me because if, or the employer is gonna say that because they're paying you a salary which is already higher than the jury duty so in that case what are you going to do because the jury duty pay first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like this cpa thinking cap for example CPA thinking CAP you see what we did with like with the letters and this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple CPA thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com might be reported to the IRS. Uh, and, and so you're gonna have to report it somewhere on the return. So possibly you can put the income on the income line item, but then negate it for the for the adjusted gross income calculation by also having it uh, reduced so that you can still show the proper amount which will match up to what the IRS has but remove it uh, in that case. So line 24B, 
enter the deductible expenses related to income reported on line 8i from the rental of personal property you engaged in for profit but were not in the business of renting such property so now you have a situation that if you sold uh, personal property uh, for profit then the question is where where would you you know report that income so if it's uh, personal property we're not talking about real estate property in other words the types of business income will typically be a schedule c so if it was a type of business you would think it would be on the schedule c if it was rental real estate then it might be on the schedule e if it's not part of a, a normal business profit uh, then again and then if it was a capital gain situation of a sale of a capital gain it might ultimately have to be re reported on the schedule d in which case you could have different kind of tax consequences uh, related to it so one of the questions that come up here is one is it something that's going to have to be included in income or can it be exempt from income if it's included in income then the question is going to be two where do i put the calculation on the forms in order to know where to put it on the forms you also want to think about the different tax consequences that might be applied to it so you can properly place it in other words if you were going to have a schedule c type of income generally the normal income from the schedule c is an income statement income minus expenses and the net income rolls into the first page of the form 1040 but we also saw that the schedule c could subject people to self-employment tax and you also have that business deduction related to it and so on and so forth so one of the questions is is the income something that should be subject to self-employment tax or not if so maybe it should be like on the schedule c if it's not subject to self-employment tax another question would be is it something that's a capital gain type of activity or something that should be taxed at ordinary income rates remembering that the capital gain income uh, usually for sole proprietors or for individuals comes from the sale of stock is like the most common thing if it's long-term capital gain could actually have more favorable tax rates other than ordinary income and not be subject to of course self-employment uh, tax in that case or is it something that should be taxed at ordinary income rates uh and and uh and and but uh, and not capital gain rates and not be subject to the self-employment tax so when you're thinking about this other category those are some of the questions that come up also if you're talking about something that you sold you you have the question of what's going to be the amount of income because instead of just the gross proceeds that you received it's going to be the proceeds minus the adjusted basis or in essence cost to figure the actual income given the general rule that's the general rule for an income tax meaning you shouldn't be taxed on the gross but in theory in general you should be taxed on the net what did you have to expend the expenditures that you had to make in order to generate the income you would think would be deductible with regards to something that you are selling the cost of it uh, is going to be part of the basically expense you would think so once again enter the deductible expenses related to income reported on line uh, 8i from rental of personal property you engaged for profit but were not in the business of renting such property okay line 24c enter the non-taxable amount of the value of olympic and paralympic medals and usoc prize money reported on line 8m so we talked a little bit about this when we talked about uh, the income side of things and we said that basically the irs is going to say that everything that you receive is going to be some kind of income unless there's an exception and that typically includes things like prizes but then they put a special kind of exception in there for olympic and paralympic medals and usoc prize money so now you have a situation well if you got that prize money once again it could be reported to the irs possibly and, and therefore you're going to need to record it possibly in income but if the irs wants to make it so there's not a tax consequence maybe on line 24c we can enter the non-taxable amount which means that it has been recorded in income but then we're going to net it out 
and the adjustment to pull it back out again. Now, this isn't something that you're going to basically commonly see, but conceptually, you get basically the idea. And you might have an Olympian champion client, right? And obviously, as an American, I feel like you shouldn't be taxing people in the Olympics uh, if they won prize money. You should tax them if they lose. We don't tax the... You tax the loser. Where, where's the incentive structure? It's always upside down with these taxes, I tell you. Anyways, line 27Z. Use line 27Z to report any adjustments not reported elsewhere. List the type and amount of the adjustment. So you can see in this other category, we're seeing things that are basically less common here. Of course, that's why they're under the other, but they still listed them out, the most common ones under the other. And then if you have some deductions that don't fit into any of those categories, possibly putting it into line 24Z and then giving them some indication of what that is for. Form 1099K, loss reporting. If you sold a personal item at a loss and you did not report the loss on Form 8949, enter the amount of the sales proceeds from Form 1099K on line 24Z that you reported on line 8Z. So in the entry space next to line 24Z, write Form 1099K, personal item sold at a loss, and also enter the amount of the sale proceeds. So for example, you bought a couch for $1,000 and sold it through a third party vendor for $700, which was reported on your form 1099K. So you can see kind of the problem that is happening here. One, that being that now you made a sale, it was for, and you got proceeds. The sale was a 1099, but then it got reported on a 1099K for you. Now, it wasn't actually, you sold it for a loss, and therefore, given our normal kind of income concept, what should be taxable, well, if it was for a loss, I shouldn't have to pay taxes on it, uh, would be the general, the general idea, right? So then the question, the questions that come up again is, well, now I got a 1099, I'm going to have to report the income somewhere, or else the IRS is, is going to say you got a 1099 that you didn't report somewhere. Where am I going to put it? Well, if it was for a lot, the question, the, the same questions would come up. Well, if it was a business thing, you would think the 1099 would be reported on a Schedule C. But if it wasn't your normal business, you wouldn't think it would be on the Schedule C. If it was a cap, was subject to capital gains, then you would think that it would be on uh, the Schedule D, which you, which could be good if you had gains or even a uh, because or even a loss possibly, because then you might be able to take it against other income. Uh, but if not, then the question is, you at least need to be able to report it so that you can show the IRS, here's the income and here's the, the basically situation. It was a loss, which means I shouldn't be paying taxes on the gross amount of the income. All right. So on line 27Z, uh, you would enter 700. And in the entry space next to line 27Z, you would enter Form 1099-K, personal items sold at a loss. See instructions for line 8Z. All right, tip. If you sold more than one personal item at a loss or received more than one Form 1099-K for personal items you sold at a loss and you entered the total amount of sales proceeds on line 8Z, you should also enter the total amounts of sale proceeds on uh, line 24Z. So correct Form 1099-K. So if you received a form 1099K that shows a that shows payments you didn't receive or is otherwise incorrect and you can't get it corrected, enter the amount on line 24Z that you reported on line 8Z in the entry space next to to line 24Z, right? Incorrect form 1099K and also enter the amount that was incorrectly reported to you. So similar kind of issue. You got a 1099K and you shouldn't have got a 1099K. Now this, they're getting better at this, but you can see what the IRS is trying to do. The strategy of the IRS is to go after the issuer, the one that gets a deduction, just like we see with W-2 income. They go after the one that, that's paying the money because they get the deduction and they say, you have to tell us, you have to rat out to us with the form W-2 that doesn't just go to the taxpayer, but to the IRS the income that has been received if you want that deduction. 
Same thing with the 1099. That's the general strategy. Do you want to deduct that amount? You have to tell us who you paid so that we can go after them for the income. However, with some of these gig works in particular, these this, this, the, the platforms are actually not really uh, paying contractors in those cases. They're really platforms that are bringing two people together. They're kind of like a silk road uh, you know, where, that, that are allowing people to trade, allowing people to come together in a way that hasn't happened before. Uh, so, that, so the question then is, well, the IRS wants to, wants to be able to have someone give them a 1099, and it's hard to go after these little businesses that are being brought together in the Silk Road of these platforms, these gig platforms. Uh, so they want to go after the platform itself or the payment intermediary, the credit card companies, the PayPal's of the worlds and so forth. And sometimes there's overlap. So you might get two 1099s for the same income or something like that. So as the government tries to strangle, put their stranglehold over the economy, and, and put a bunch of potholes in the new Silk Road of the, of the, of the internets to make trading more difficult, uh, the, then, then you could see what happens. So you could end up with two 1099s, in which case you have to put the income somewhere. Otherwise, the IRS will say that you didn't report your income and then be able to report the loss as well. So you imagine the income you report on other income of, of Schedule 1 likely, and then the loss you're also going to report or the decrease you might report in the other uh, adjustment so that the net amount nets out, but you still have something on the return trying to tell the IRS here's what happened. So, for example, if you received a Form 1099-K that incorrectly shows $800 of payment to you, you would enter $800 on line 24Z and in the entry space next to 24C, you would uh, write incorrect form 1099K, $800, see the instructions for line 8Z.